have the uh, pleasure of continuing the conversation around how we as agencies should be paid for our most important asset, the talent we have in our businesses. As an industry, um, uh, think about valuing the concept of our ideas. Wouldn't it be silly if we look back now and think that Walt Disney would ever have considered the value of the empire that he's created would have been something that would have been justified by the train trip from one location to another in the US. I think it, it, I think it really, really does distill out the challenge. And the reality for us is that the challenge is very, very important to us today because 91% of all of our compensation agreements in the US are labor-based compensation agreements. Nine out of 10 agreements, we are selling our talent by the hour. And therefore, if we are in that reality, we need to make sure that we put the very best talent we have in our business to negotiate and protect the value of our company and the revenues we deserve. No differently than the way we focus on investing the right talent and value in producing the ideas our clients so very value from us. And the other reality that we all need to face is that we are being scrutinized. Law firms, accountants, management consultants, scale talents, all are in the people service business. They're all selling talent. Yet we, for some reason, seem to be in a very unique place, and it's not a good place. We have allowed ourselves to be heavily scrutinized. We are allowing clients to have conversations with us about FTEs and overheads and profits, and that is not a good thing. Today, we need to start the transition of moving from the 91% being based on the detail and the scrutiny towards a new ideal, an ideal that I believe starts with the transition towards what Rick was sharing earlier, the move towards the scopes of work. And labor, labor is our asset. At the end of the day, if we don't value and protect that one asset in our business, we will soon find that, they, that those talents will no longer want to be an important part of our business. And the reality that we also need to accept is that clients don't want to pay for our talent the same way that we want to sell our talent. And, and the only way that we are going to get control of those conversations is by we need to be first to having the conversation around how we want to be paid. We need to be first to the, the discussion. We need to have a principle. We need to have a methodology. We need to train our agencies and our talent in our agencies to understand how we want to be compensated. And then, as, as they said earlier, we need to draw the line. We need to stay principled and demand that we are respected and valued appropriately. We want this and that. We demand a share in that and most of that, some of this and all of that. Less of that and more of this and plenty of this. Nothing. We want it now. I want it yesterday. I want more tomorrow. And the demands will all be changed then, so f***ing stay away. So the reality is, if we're not controlling the conversation, I think that's the type of conversation we have to end up have. We end up having, and and I certainly know that. Um, you know, I think I absolutely believe, and I know many of the talent in this room. We have the ability to control the conversation, and we now need to just galvanise and have that conversation as an industry. So I'm going to focus on the uh, talent component. Uh, some of my colleagues are going to talk to you about the other important components of compensation, uh, overhead or indirect cost, as I like to call it, profit, which I just plain out like. Um, and and the, the way I've distilled this down is I've distilled it down into what I think are three traps that will help us um, uh, protect the value of our talent. And the first one for me is a, is a very, very simple one. It's purely around the definition. And it's the definition of how we define labor. 
I, in my humble opinion, want to define labor as the sum total of the direct salary, the benefits, and the payroll taxes that we pay for each and every employee. Our clients want to pay for it very differently. They want to pay for it as just the sum total of direct salary. Why do they want to do that? Well, importantly, not only is the amount of money that they're paying then, or they feel they're paying for labor less, but they're also making a very, very important statement. They're telling you that the benefits and the taxes associated with engaging people is your problem to manage. They quickly shuffle it into the overhead conversation, the indirect cost conversation. And I, and I believe that that is something we should not allow to happen. It is the cost of engaging an employee. We don't not pay benefits to our employees. We don't, have, uh, we don't see reduced payroll taxes. I mean, in today's world, particularly as I'm getting used to the US, I'm certainly starting to learn a lot about the fact that the increased health care costs, the increased taxes costs, are going to be a very, very big burden on our businesses in the future. If we control the conversation around labor and the definition of labor, we will more directly be able to have a conversation with our clients about the increased cost of our business. And guess what? They're a labor business as well. So it's an easy conversation because the same realities are being faced by their business. The second one is a worrying trend that I'm seeing um, in many of the conversations that I've had to face around uh, with consultants and clients alike. And I'm calling this trap the multiplier trap. And the multiplier trap is very, very simple. Um, the, the, the multiplier trap is purely the ratio that we use to multiply the labor assumption that we're employing on the client compensation to generate the revenue expectation we want to earn. The trap that we're seeing with the multiplier is that clients and consultants are looking to decouple it from the conversation around labor. When they decouple the conversation around labor, they like to start out with the $75,000. It's lower. It feels less for more, more for less. Then they say, OK, but guess what? There's a real great trend in the industry. There's a multiplier out there that's 2.28. And what you very, very quickly find, and I will tell you, it's happened to me. You will quickly find that clients gravitate to the 75, they gravitate to the 2.28, and that will cost your agency $47,000 for that very sole individual employee. You've just lost $47,000 worth of revenue and $47,000 worth of profit. Watch out for that trap. The third one is one that I just loathe. I loathe these conversations around FTEs, as I've already said. And utilization is obviously how we as employee, employers decide to leverage our talent. And the hours in a year that we decide we should be applying to our client's business. The truth is this. We've lost control of that conversation as well. Because the clients and the consultants are now telling us there's a new benchmark. They're dictating that every one of our employees should be contributing 2,000 hours of billable time to each piece of client business. We have to stop this happening. Because when I think about the 2,000 hours, we all know the obvious, basic, simple mathematics of all of this. So this is nothing inspirational here. But for the same employee that we were talking about recently on the multiplier earning $218,000, you might well turn around and say, well, as long as I get my $218,000 for that employee, I'm not going to worry about the number of hours that I have to apply uh, or, or ask my employee to work. And from a mathematical standpoint, you've protected your revenue, you feel okay. But I will tell you now, it's a trap. 
The trap is it won't end up helping you in the long term. The consultants get what they want. More hours, less hourly rate. You think you've got what you want. $218,000 worth of, uh, $218, worth of uh, revenue. But what happens when scope changes? What happens when cuts come? you will end up in a position where you are not able to properly recover the talent you have within your business. And if I take it to the other stage of why we as employers shouldn't allow this conversation to be dictated to us by our consultants and clients, it is more to do with the emotional toll the, 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 that we are placing on our employees as a result of this. So I want to just walk you through very, very quickly how I look at an employee and the contribution they make to our company. It starts out with 203 hours. I mean, we pay every employee and we hope, it doesn't always happen, but we hope they have the ability to take some holiday, enjoy uh, or take vacations, I should say, in the US, and have some holidays. Um, another reality of, of, of everyday living is that sickness will happen. Bereavement will happen. That's a draw on an employee's time and an hour's commitment. If we start to do a better job, and I think this is one of the fundamental differences in, in answering the McKinsey comment earlier, is we need to invest more back into training our people. Only by training our people and being public about how we train our people can we really drive the, 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 the conversation towards a value conversation. Why? because we're demonstrating we value our people and we're investing in them. Then there's agency activities. You know, they're our employees. Their first priority should be to the health of our company. And whether that's new business activities, whether it's uh, contributing to you know, cultural days uh, within the agency business, we must not ever forget that they are our employees. So if we then tolerate the 2,000 hours, we're basically asking every employee to deliver 2,378 hours in any one year. I don't know about you, I have an uh, employment contract, and my employment contract demands that I work 1,820 hours a year. It's probably not the reality, it's probably not the expectation, but if I'm only being compensated for 1,820 hours in a year, like every other employee in the Leo Burnett company, and clients are demanding that happens, we are giving away 558 hours of our talented people's time for nothing. We are giving away, we are actually placing a tremendous toll on them as individuals. And that will be the biggest threat to maintaining and keeping the talent we need within our business. So, in summary, we have to control the conversation. Each and every one of those traps I talked to you about, we have to be first to the conversation. We have to have our principle. We have to make sure that we put the very best talent we have in our business front and center, protecting the health of our agency. We have to establish our own agency way of wanting to conduct business. There are lots of different financial models. That is a point of differentiation that we can all benefit from. But we have to be principled within that. We have to just make sure that there isn't any weakness within our companies as it comes to actually understanding how you want to be paid as a business. And then the other very, very important thing is let's not allow any conversations to be decoupled. It was talked about brilliantly earlier. I don't want to have a conversation about profit without understanding if the client wants to pay me for bonus as part of my labor cost. I don't want to have a conversation about the overhead percentage, divorced from the conversation about whether or not they're going to pay for my payroll taxes and the benefits I have for that employee. Do not allow them to divide the conversation up into pieces. We are stronger if you have the negotiation in totality. And less is more. 
we need to start the transition away from the scrutiny that we are facing as a business and strive towards the, the, the more standardized, more accepted principled approach that we see within the accounting professions, the legal professions. And I couldn't agree more again. I think the transition starts away from the granularity of ours towards the next step being about how do we develop and sell scope. Thank you very much.